up, SMU? SMU? Yeah. You're listening to SMU BE Campus Radio Say What You Want to Say. And welcome to the first episode of our new series, where we talk about everything in SMU, ranging from academics, school life, even community service projects. I'm your host, Nick Bay. And you know, I am so swallowed up emotion today because it's the end of our academic journey for our guest today. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys want to introduce yourself to the camera before I, you know, I just start gushing out. Hi, my name is Faith. I am a final year psychology major. And in my time here, what have I done? I've done a whole bunch of stuff. I, uh, I hosted, I've sung in choir, I took up fencing again after 12 years of silence. I learned how to airbrush, I cried through one term of intro to Python, um, I built a sculpture, I learned basic counseling skills, and I made a candle, among other things. Yeah. Woo! I like how your achievements are so stacked. That's like a whole <laughs> long list. Yes. Okay, so time for you to bring it out your list. Hey everyone, it's your girl Andrea. I can't believe I'm saying it for the last time. Yes! <laughs> no, but it's a bittersweet thing, you know. I'm so happy to be here with Nick, of course, and Faith, who are both in social sciences as well. Yes, you're looking at three social sciences students. <laughs> so I'm a final year sociology and arts and culture management major. I think if I were to list down everything I've done, it would be the entirety of this podcast, so I'll spare you all. But <laughs> I'm so happy to be back here today, and yeah, I'm overwhelmed that our juniors decided that they wanted to interview us as a kickoff to this podcast. Really, really happy to be here and I'm very honoured that the legacy of my introduction is being carried off with this series, What's Up, SMU. That's right. <laughs> my signature. <laughs> your signature. Is that what you usually say? What's yeah. Up? What's up, everyone? It's your girl, Andrea. Aww. Yeah, so it's nice. 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 Alright. I haven't had time to come with my uh, signature uh, intro yet. Usually it's just, hi, this is Nick Bay. Or, <laughs> it works. Recognizable all the time. Bay, yeah. In case you don't know, Andrea's actually a, a award recipient of the Student Life Awards. So, you know, every time I walk past the basement, I always see her poster. So I'm always like, hey, that's Andrea. Yeah, her face is like right there. Eh? Yeah, that's right. Very honored. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I gotta ask, like, you know, do you guys have any favorite memories of SMU? I think one of the more major things that happened this year was actually something that I managed to call people from SMU to go see. So Waterloo Street, which is not really that far from SMU, I had like a mini group exhibition with the Objective Centre. It's really great. You know, every other day I'd be like bringing students from <laughs> Campus Green to walk over and Nick was one of them, uh, which I was so grateful that he yeah. came, came by and he did a uh, write-up for all of the exhibition for a school project, so I was really honoured as well to be included in that. So, it's no, one of I, the many, I, I, many I really appreciate you taking the time to actually come down so of I could course, interview you. Of course, of course. And you're just introducing me to the whole place. <laughs> oh, it was really cool, yeah, I'm just seeing your Aww, work, yeah. Thank you. I came back a few times after that as well, so. See, he didn't tell me this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's true, because, uh, you know, I was just so proud, like, you know, because I, uh, I really wanted to come on the day of the exhibition, then mm. I couldn't, so I was like, okay, I gotta hear it from the person herself. Aww. Yeah, so thanks. Thank you for giving me your time. <laughs> yeah. Yourself, Faith? Um, okay, this is going to be like kind of ENTP, kind of mean maybe. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, but for me, I think my favorite memory is uh, actually like class participation. Really? Like, yeah, really. I, I just really miss bickering with the teachers. I, I miss bickering with the professors. I think that like this has been such a fascinating way to learn anything I just like maybe they'll say something and I'll just be like yeah but have you considered maybe it could be this other thing I think it's quite interesting to be able to kind of like turn an issue around and also be rewarded in the process for it Mm -hmm. um yeah class part has definitely saved my grade on multiple occasions (laughs) me too (laughs) same yeah Uh, I get what you mean like I think there are some classes that class part so much that um my prof immediately assumes I'm going to speak or say something. They just look at you, don't they? Like, yeah, Nick. Exactly. You know, sometimes I was just scratching my head. <laughs> do you want to say all anything? All of a sudden, I was like, oh, yeah, Nicholas, uh, you have something to say? And I'm like, I do. <laughs> so I was like, okay, sure, why not? Yeah. But I think it's also like a great testament to the open-mindedness of the students as well because you got everybody with like different perspectives and everybody's willing to talk to each other. Yeah. Not to cut each other off, but to like actually listen to what you say take it in and then try to come up with like a different perspective. It's not so much about arguing. It's more so about trying to understand a person and then just giving a different side to things, which yeah. I really appreciate here. I think it's, it's very worthwhile coming to SMU because of this as well. Yeah, definitely. Because like, I know SMU, sometimes like some of my friends will ask me, hey, Nick, why you never go to other university? Uh? SMU got <laughs> no campus life. Uh? How? Uh? 
So I mean, what do you guys feel? Do you guys feel like you got like a campus life, you know, whether it's academics or, you know, co-curricular stuff? Oh, uh, yeah. 100%. Of course, of course. I feel like that's the main draw to SMU, actually. Exactly. I, it's like the campus life is so bright, vibrant, you can't escape it. Yeah. It's like energy that never dies down. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it's Definitely. like you're walking past like T-Junction or any part of the school and there's people dancing anyway, so you might as well just, just pick up the CCA. Whichever. Yeah. You know, just yeah. groove, you know, on the way to class. Have you done that? Ah, uh, you know, I'm not going to say anything for camera. Uh, sh- <laughs> once or twice, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I think that like there's so much going on like all the time. I will half miss and half not miss all the emails that you get for everything. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just like, hi, do you want to join this cooking class? Would you like to learn how to 3D print things? Yes. Would you like to learn, you know... Would you like to have a conversation session with someone in a different language? And it's just every every week there is something new and different and strange. And I mean, you know, I'm also going to miss the welfare a lot. I'm oh. just saying. The welfare at SMU is the best. I love right, it. Right? I bring back so much stuff home, you know. It's crazy. Yeah, I, like, I feel like little Santa Claus time. Do you remember? I remember. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> you guys remember. I don't know this. You got to tell okay. me. Oh, yeah, you, this is before for this year. Yeah. Okay, so basically... Oh one of my first leadership positions in SMU was for the Arts and Culture Fraternity, better known as ACF. So I was the public relations director, and my goodness, I think I'll let Faith continue on with the amount of welfare items that she brought home, but I'm really blessed to have been able to give students the opportunity to have that many welfare items. My goodness. <laughs> okay, so I I can't even begin to, like, I'm, I'm trying to brain this, I right? Think people still have leftovers. Yes, sure. I'm 90% sure. Yeah. Okay, this is no. what happened, right? <laughs> what? This is what happened, okay? I, I, um, I, this, this was an ACF welfare, and this was during the COVID era, okay? So, like, you can imagine during the COVID era, maybe companies are like skins, right? Yeah. So, you know, you think, okay, la, they don't really give that much, la, okay? Wrong, okay? Andrea, like, sent out this EDM <laughs> with her, with the rest of the ACF people, and they were like, Oh, you know, um, bring your own bag for environmental purposes. And I completely forgot. And what happened was that I was wearing one of those like really large, like bomber jacket type yes. things. Bomber like jackets. it was large and green. You know, like you like New York art girl kind of vibes. Yeah. So what happened, right, was that <laughs> I got there. There were just boxes and boxes of Quaker things. Okay, just like. Boxes of cereal, basically. Yeah, it's just like cereal, One of the items. <laughs> biscuits, soya bean, soya, soya bean drink. drink. Yeah, the, like a cold one. Um, Do I even remember what I gave out? I don't a even remember. There was so much stuff, right? And and here's the thing, right? <laughs> I was collecting for two people, okay? So me and you a choir friend. You should have friend. seen the photos of her after the event. She was like carrying it literally like Santa Claus. Yeah, like, like a little sack, you know? I felt like a burglar. Like one of those cartoon burglars where like they steal from the house what and then they the run away. Like, <laughs> is going on. We'll show you the pictures it. later. Yeah, no, it was right, right. wild. And Lionel like, will edit it in later. And like, I had a midterm, okay? I had a midterm to go to after that. So, Wait. so you can imagine, right? Me carrying this like hobo jacket, two midterms, like... I, I completely bombed that midterm, but never mind, you know, it'd okay. be like that sometimes. And then I just had to like carry everything back in my like hobo jacket, just like, oh, I'm going off. Like <laughs> it, it really was that kind of experience. And it was wild. My, I, I basically went home, right? And I was like, I, I now have to feed my family like this. We can survive the winter. We have, we have provisions. And what happened was that eventually I had to give it to my mother and go, I don't know, man. I, I don't think we can do this. We can we cannot do this alone. Can can you like get your Zumba buddies to kind of take some home? The Zumba buddies. Yeah, <laughs> Zumba buddies. Okay, the Zumba army had to come in. What Zumba army? What is going on? Yeah, so Andrea I fed SMU and more. Fed SMU <laughs> with rations wow. to survive the winter. Alright, but that's serious life advice, okay? Check your emails. Cause yes. there's always gonna be welfare available and you, you know the sign up is really competitive sometimes. Mm. Uh, unless you're like me and they just went through this leftovers. Mm-mm. You still have buffet cleaners? Oh, yeah. yeah. We actually, the person who did the video about SME buffet cleaners is yeah. from Social Sciences. Oh, Wilson. Uh. Shout out Wilson. Wilson. Yeah, shout out yes. to Wilson. <laughs> have you guys actually ever managed to get like the stuff from SME buffet cleaners? Once. Um, when I Nando's think was so. on campus. Ah, uh, I just, I, I signed up properly. <laughs> Nando's um, was on campus? Yes. Nando's was on campus what? for the last two days of exams. With the mascot and everything, oh, they yes. were giving out oh. peri peri chicken. Yeah, there was an Instagram <laughs> contest, right, yes. where oh, they got people man. to comment. The university that commented the most would get Nando's. Yeah, it was That's us. Right. We well spammed it. 
Good job, us. <laughs> yeah, I said you love our chicken. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nando's but, chicken specifically. Come back again. Thank you very much. Yeah. Exactly. Please our come back. Our mascot is SMU chicken, you know. <laughs> <laughs> because Andrea and I came in in 2019, mm. for about two good years, basically, like there was nothing on SMU Buffet Clearers. So mm. y'all, y'all better get it on behalf of us, okay? Yes, please. Y'all milk it. <laughs> Take full advantage of it. Exactly. Whenever exactly. you see a buffet, just go for it. Sprint, don't walk. <laughs> I have literally seen people just... Running across zoom, campus, no? Yeah. Right? yeah, like it's crazy. I know, I it's know because I'm also sprinting as well, but like... <laughs> He's like right next to them yeah, in like lane know. number two. There's this, there's always this sort of thing going around where people go like, oh, SMU Snakes Management University. But like, I don't know. I, I no, never I really... Yeah. yeah, I didn't get that vibe. You know what I mean? It, it feels very much like, you know, I, I feel like I've been empowered to go up to people and just be like, hey, this is my deal and I'm really interested in this stuff and I know you're really smart and I know you're really good at it. What do I do? Absolutely. And people just tell you, which is wild. Like out there, it's like, oh yeah, I'll tell you for $60 an hour. And here it's just like, yeah, sure. I feel like we ourselves start to feel like we can do that too for other people. I think it's really a credit to generations of not only SMU students, but to staff and faculty who've really inculcated this idea of being open and willing to share, I don't think like any of this energy would have been possible without that. And I hope that it continues to go on because it's so important. It's like, if you have something, like a, any piece of like valuable advice, information, like just be open because you never know the amount of people that can benefit in the years to, years to come as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, yeah, definitely. I feel like I've taken a lot away from my, like the friendships and relationships mm-hmm. I've built up with my, you know, not just my classmates, but my profs as well. Actually, that's one thing I want to ask, because you guys are my seniors, so I've also asked y'all for advice, but what advice did your seniors actually give you when you first started out at SMU? The piece of advice that stuck the most with me came at the end of my first module. Okay. It was Understanding Societies, which is ah. a module that all of us have taken that's right. as social science students. So a friend of a senior of mine who was a group mate uh, mentioned how she was never really a very overly invested in her GPA, you know, she considered that a secondary part of her learning and her education and I completely agree with her. For me, I think throughout my whole education journey as well, I've never been too, uh, I've never prioritised my grades as much. I think for me, it's always been about the learning and the actual takeaways that I can apply in the future and, you know, to realise circumstances, I think that's much more valuable. Sometimes people are too focused on numbers and I think that's not a very healthy way of approaching it so why well, yes you know if you're trying to achieve a certain grade that might be good but please remember to take care of yourself um, summa cum laude is not going to be good if you're not healthy within yourself physically and mentally so make sure that you focus on your happiness and your health and the grades and all of the achievements will follow after just like one advice you know you really really want people to you know, take away from this video like mm. What's something you want everyone to know about? Whether they're like your juniors or incoming freshmen, or even people you know, like deciding whether to come to SMU or not. Mm. Wow. Actually, if, if I may, th- I think there are two phases that I would like to share. I think the first one is something that my father has always shared with me. It's actually thinking about getting a tattoo of it, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, but the first one is knowledge is power. So whatever room you walk into, your objective should be absorbing as much knowledge as you can possibly take on for yourself at the point of time. And I think the second one is, winning is trying. I think that is a phrase that a lot of people find it hard to accept because it seems like the world is built around only being able to achieve a gold medal, trophy, a title, specific income. But I think the real win is actually giving yourself the chance to try. I know it's cliche, but it really doesn't matter the amount of times you fall down. It's how you pick yourself up. Please don't put pressure on yourself. Take things one step at a time and take things at your own pace. Life is not a competition. It's a race that we should all finish together and we should all cross that line together. So if you can, help others. Be contented with yourself. Take care of yourself. This is so wholesome advice. (laughs) Meanwhile, I was here like, oh, yes, you should use the resources that are given to you. Which, but you which should. Is, yeah. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. yeah like, I mean, resources, resources. Yeah. There are so many resources at SMU. It's wild. Mm. I, I, I mean, I only used some of them. I feel like I really underused my career coach. So I'll uh, 
you know, Sam, uh, you'll be hearing from me after this, I think, I think. Um, <laughs> but also, aside from that, right, like, there's just so much going on. You can, yeah. you can just randomly talk to professors whom you're not even in the same class with. Like, I got in contact with one of the professors for, like, user experience writing mm. and, like, you know, we're trying to work things out on that front now and I'm just like, wow, I, I could just go do that. If you've got an interest in like leading things, you can just go ahead. I mean, at the end of every semester, there's always like, this club is looking for its ex code, that club yeah. is looking for its ex code, and you're just like, wow, you're just going to give people the ex code roles like that? That is, that is something. You know, here at SMU, you've got things like the exploratory modules, for example. Mm -hmm. I, I okay. used one for um, intro to programming, so I actually did something with the School of Computing and oh, Information man. Systems. Quarter girl. I um I got a D, so okay, you know right. that's that's the important thing. I tried, and therefore yes. no one that's should okay. criticize me. Thankfully, this was during Zoom University period, so like I could just kind of go, "Hi guys, I'm going off to the toilet," and then I would like close the webcam cover, and then I would cry a little oh. bit, and then I would open it like, "Hey, I'm back." Yeah, um, but aside from that, like you know. This is the time, right? There is no better time in your entire life to just go out and try mm. weird things that yes. you thought you would never be able to do otherwise. I mean, I did art history because I thought about all the things that I wouldn't be able to do outside, and that was the big one. Yeah. And yeah, you know, you never know where it takes you. So just, you know, try things, go for it, like use resources and like, you know, be be happy to be a resource to other people as well. Yeah. And I think your time here will be so much better if you do. If I can just add on something really quickly. Ooh, how do you? I think it's also important to think about the life you want to lead after graduation. I know it might seem a little bit far-fetched, but four years are much faster than you think they are past us. So I, I think it also would be opportune if you take the time to reflect on yourself, you know. Who are you? What are the principles that you stand for? Who do you want to be to in service yourself and in service your others? And I think if you take those four years and how you interact with those four years and the people around you and your environment, it really gives you something great to reflect upon and then you know you can go out into the world and you, you have a strong foundation to go upon. So I think university life is really a preview to what life is after graduation. So make as much use of it as you can and bank on as many resources as you can find. Again, do not be shy. I know it's it's a tall order and I would know this personally because I was a very shy person growing up. Doesn't look like it right now, but that's because, you know, after years of acclimating to, you know, opportunities that have you in the limelight or opportunities that require you to be a public speaker, I think you realise that it actually does a lot of benefit for you. So put yourselves in the rooms where you're afraid to go in because you never know where your next opportunity is going to come from as well. I'm just going to echo what several members of A Couple With, which is, a, <laughs> which is another series right. for Campus Radio. It's so funny, we're plugging Campus Radio series here. Go check it out. Yes, um, <laughs> we were both like on it and we were both like editing it. Yes. So A Couple With is basically like the series where all these like alumni come back and they have a little like, where are they now session. Mm. And a lot of them go, oh, you should take more internships. And guess what? They're right. I regret to inform you that they're absolutely <laughs> right. Um, I took one internship and I feel like, you know, I learned about myself as a person, but I wish I learned more about myself as a person and also made money at the same time, which is the thing that you can do while interning. Yeah. As you will hear from the career fairs as well, mm. like people like looking at your internship experience. So if you've got that, more power to you. Yes. Um, if you're really chasing that like hashtag career, hashtag girl boss, hashtag boy boss kind of thing. Boy boss. I mean, we don't have one, but we could. This is a good time to really get acquainted and do things that you otherwise would never have done. Yeah. I feel like... He's reflecting. <laughs> yeah, having a reflection moment, you know, even though of an interview. This is the time where you add like the sparks or the, like, the light bulb behind him. It's like he's reached Nirvana. Physical health is one thing, mental health is one thing as well, and the emotional mm. health as well. Yes. And you don't have all three, you know, you're just going to have an awful like university life. After a point, you kind of have to... I mean, it's a constant process of calibration, I think, where you go, okay, how much rest am I going to engage in? How much am I going to push? And you're always kind of trying to negotiate the boundaries mm. between those two things. I don't think there's ever sort of like a hard and fast, like, 
I am off at 6 p.m. Goodbye. Sleeping. Never talk to me again until yes. we are done. <laughs> like, never talk to me again until 9 a.m. Like, yes. yeah. Just appear until the next day. Exactly. People have like midnight meetings, and you're just like, yep, okay. You know, and like, casual <laughs> 2 a.m. No, meeting. thank you. <laughs> yeah, and now, and now I'm just like, hmm, 11 p.m., a time to tuck into bed and be cute and watch a little bit of Netflix <laughs> before drifting off. Take care of yourself. I know it seems a little bit unrealistic right now, mm. but you have one body and that body is going to follow you for the rest of your life. Absolutely. So don't yeah. do anything that would cause lasting damage, I would mm. say. I'm just curious, is that your bedtime routine? You just tuck yourself into it and just say to yourself, oh, time to be cute now. <laughs> um, yes, as a matter of fact, I do say time to be cute now. Um, but I... Because uh, usually for me, it's like I go to bed. Like after a long day, I just go to bed. I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> He does it in the Yoda accent as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to sleep, I will. Faith has been, uh, you know, he's been quite influential to me like in my past year at like, SMU. And uh, one of the things she actually, um, he actually told me, and you also mentioned earlier in the podcast, was like, how about you got to try new things. Mm. Like, just trying like new events, meeting new people, trying new experiences. Mm. I started my own YouTube channel uh, just for the fun of it. And now it's something I enjoy a lot. You know, it takes a lot of uh, stress off me. Yeah, and it's also growing quite well as well. So thank you so much for, you know, inspiring me. And also inspiring you for me to be a better filmographer. Aw, that's so sweet. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually before this uh, podcast, I want to go ask a bunch of my juniors uh -huh. and my friends, like some advice we wish we could get from seniors. Oh. Uh, you know, how do you guys manage cash, you know? like Wow. <laughs> do we? <laughs> do we? Do we? <laughs> I think there are some cost saving things, for example, okay, akin to buffet cleaners. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> if, the ultimate cost savings. If you can cook, I feel like that's such a valuable skill. It doesn't matter your background, I think that will last you anywhere if you're traveling overseas as well. I think that's such a mm. valuable skill to have. Mm. Cooking is such an important skill. Yes. Like, I mean, Life all y'all gonna do global exposure, right? Mm. So, you know, this is an invaluable skill, y'all. Just, like, you know, use it when you go overseas. It's super important. Mm. There are ways, I guess, to build your side hustle money mm. while you're at SMU. If you work for the admissions office, sometimes the Office of Student Life, I believe, also hires people. Yes. Um, the SMU shop also hires people. But aside from that, you can also, let's say host with the artist management team at SMUBE. Ooh. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You can become a TA yes. and earn $600 a semester. Five ninety, Close enough. Yeah, or you can... Do you get paid as an RA? Yes, you, you do, do get right? uh, paid as a research assistant. Yes, and it's very fulfilling doing both of these jobs as well. If you like interacting with people... You know, of course, being a teaching assistant, you have to be in class every week, but I'd say it's very fulfilling, especially when you want to revise content that you've learned before, I think it's really the extra anchor for you to really solidify your understanding of a course. So it's been really great for me. Mm -hmm. I think most of my friends have come from my teaching assistant courses. So really? I've known like all four generations of SMU students oh because God. of that. So it's like I, I, have con I am in contact with like year one freshmen. And being a research assistant, I think you're then, um, you then have a whirlpool of opportunities in being able to do like literature reviews or other side gigs for the school, which will then benefit the rest of the student body. So I'd say it's a win-win situation. Exactly. And I think the rapport you build with certain professors as well, like yes. it's been great. It's been great to kind of like, you know, talk to them and kind of get deeper insights on certain things. Also very useful for references if you need for <laughs> yes. applications. Yeah. TA, right? I like to call it professional eavesdropping. <laughs> What, you're, you're eavesdropping professionally, you're in uh, class, you're listening to the syllabus, you're, you're going, you're ooh, wrong. that changed yeah, from true. last year, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you're right, you're right. No, I'm not gonna lie, you're not lying. And then, um, aside from that, you're also kind of listening to the questions that people ask, because sometimes yes. people ask like really funny questions or like questions that make you go like, oh, I didn't think about it from that, like, from that angle before. I feel like and, you're a philosopher in class. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In, in year two, right, I, I did summer school online, okay. a little bit sad, but I did summer school online and one of the things that we did was like an intro neuroscience course right. mm -hmm. and it was for stress and trauma and mm. our, final, our final presentation, right, we had to basically solo present on what our paper was going to be and after my presentation, the professor said like, have you considered starting a YouTube channel? And I was oh. like, oh, that's, that's really high praise. Yes. Um, and so I've decided that if I never had to worry about money again, I would just go to university nonstop. And then after that, I would like tell people about what I learned 
on like a Twitch stream or something, and then I would invite professors in. It would be like Joe Rogan, but academic. Yeah. That'd be so cool. If you're a billionaire and you wish to leave <laughs> your like massive inheritance to somebody, like, you know, just contact me. Yeah. You do you want so you can be your academic Joe Rogan? Yeah, <laughs> academic Joe Rogan. Such interesting. <laughs> That's such an interesting a... way of putting it. Mm. You guys have a place in SMU you're attached to. Oh. Well, you know, we've got like so many rooms. Like, oh, you know, boy. we got the fish tanks, we got the SRs, the uh, CRs, the GSRs, <laughs> more Rs. Yeah. Like. <laughs> there's, there's no R in this, but SMUB Studio. Oh, we can, we yeah. can somehow say the R Studio Room. Ah. Yes, hearts to everybody behind the camera as well. Yes. That's right, yeah. <laughs> It's a place where a lot of friendships were forged and they were maintained. So I feel like for our CCA, it's a very major part of how we've kept our spirit alive. And it, it's so nice to yeah. see like so many different people come into a space and all have a similar goal and objective and that to be entertaining. In general, I don't think places have that much significance. I think it's the people and memories that are made there. So, on my end, I do actually have a top three. Okay, all right. Wow. Yeah. Hit hey, us down. Uh, let's go. Number three. I'm very attached at this point to a cafe called Daijobu. Oh I my knew gosh, it. yes. I knew it. Shout out <laughs> yes. to Linda. <laughs> yes. And Nicholas. Shout out to Lina and Nicholas, indeed. Um, so, Daijobu, if you don't know it, is the. Um, I fondly call it the Weep Cafe. If you're an anime fan, you basically have to go to this place. It's, it's become, I think, like the rough. The anime fan equivalent of a bar for me. <laughs> Alright, number two. Number two! The SMUX Makerspace. Yes. Yes. Ooh. So, Andrea has recently experienced the beauty of the SMUX yes, Makerspace. Yes, I have. For a whole week. It? I've been signing up for different types of courses. So, 3D printing, soldering, laser cutting, you name it. I love it. I wish I knew I should have done it earlier. <laughs> but, you know, it's never too late. But Faith has been an avid Makerspace fan for That's like, right. four years. I have. So, um, I've been a Makerspace fan ever since the Makerspace did not have its own room. Mm -hmm. It used to be just like a little room of 3D printers in the Cushing Library. And then Connection was born and they had their own Makerspace. I've been campaigning, right? I've been campaigning since year one, Sam one, for a sewing machine. Because makerspaces tend to be quite gendered. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, no, we are bringing in things that like are considered like girl things. And guess so, what? By year three, yes. they had done it. Woo the sewing machine's in. And it's all me. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Alright, so you have faith to tank for your sewing machine. Exactly. So go put use it. Put that on her list of achievements. Yes. Yeah. Sewing, sewing machine. machines to connection. Yes. Back in my day, right, they brought in someone and we managed to create like kind of those Jessonite coasters. I made one in the makerspace for free. So, you know, just keep your eyes peeled for this kind of opportunity. Because honestly, like, you're a student, right? Yeah. You, you, you should take time to do weird crafty things with your life. Yeah, it's true. fun. Number one. Number one is Cozy Haven. Alright, I have to give it to Cozy Haven. Cozy Haven is great. If you've never been to Cozy Haven before, it is the stronghold of the SMU peer helpers. They're near the Office of Student Life, they're near to Kofu, and what they have is they've got a bunch of board games, mm -hmm. they've got video games if you're into Overcooked, Ooh. yep. Um, and most importantly for me personally, they have massage chairs. Yes. Yes, those <laughs> massage chairs have seen me through so much. The pain in my back, was hard carried by the massage chairs. The pain in my heart was hard carried by the peer helpers who are also there. So get this, right? Your back, settled. Your heart, settled. I'm just saying, okay, Cozy Haven, very good for you. Yeah, okay, do check out Cozy Haven. It's a great place to rest um, yes. and get advice. And of course, on learning things, you know, student life, relationships. Because I was just thinking, you know, like, let's not end this on a somber note. What's a fun yearbook quote, you know, you have on your... A fun yearbook, yearbook quote. What's a okay, yearbook okay. quote you want us all to remember I you by? I so have one. It's going to be on all my like LinkedIn and oh Instagram posts. Right. Okay, what is it? What is it? If SMU were the Oscars, I'd win Best Picture. Oof. Ups and downs, all of it. It was all fruitful and it was all worth it. 100%. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. There's a, there's a Hades Town quote, I guess, that really kind of encapsulates how I feel about my four years here, which is kind of like, this is by Hermes Torvius. It says, uh, I'll tell you where the real road lies between your ears, behind your eyes. 
that is the road to paradise. Likewise, the road to ruin. Mm. That's really nice. But it's not fun. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, like, you know, you want to see are fun. I mean, like, for me, I'll probably pick a fun. I'll probably be like, hmm, fall asleep again in class? I will not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's the Yoda yeah. impression. <sighs> yes. Don't worry, we'll get him to sing the outro. Oh no. Yes, yes, yes. please. Please sing the outro. Accompanied by someone else very dear to us, behind the camera. Yes. yes like <laughs> <laughs> we come to the end of our first episode of What's Up SMU. <laughs> Alright, do check out our socials and Instagram in the description below. And we'll see you again next time. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. Right, bye. You. Bye. And we go on. We all the times we sat together As our lives change And whatever We will still be Friends forever mm. yeah, The good beers yes. and mm, the rapper trade Friends forever we shall be mm, Yes, our friends